Welcome to Between the Covers, the show for readers and writers and lovers of books. I'm Stephanie Larkin. I'm the head penguin of Red Penguin Books, a publishing company that works with authors of all types and genres. So whether you have a book in your head or on a manuscript just ready to send right in right now, visit us at Red Penguin Books and unleash your inner author. And speaking of authors, I am so delighted tonight to be joined by an author of not one but two books, Dr. Alfred Titus. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm delighted that you're here. here. And two books, so I'm glad we have like <laughs> lots and lots of time. Yes. Well, yes. before we get started on the books, I wanted to give you, because it's Between the Covers is a book club. Okay. And we have an on-the-air book club, too. So if you would like to join our online book club, visit BetweenTheCoversTV.com and you can get all sorts of free books and information, and here is your library card. Thank you. So that you can borrow, well, right now you can Very borrow nice. your own books, but any <laughs> books of any of our authors who have been on the show, okay. and you can certainly borrow their books. Thank you. That's what we want. We want, we want nice. readers. Yes. That's our goal in life, is we want some readers. Yes, we, we definitely need more readers. We do need readers. Now, we're gonna, we have a little game every week we play with our audience okay. to, see, to see how smart they are. Oh. <laughs> All right, this should be interesting. It is very interesting. <laughs> um, Bobby, I think we have a slide with our book trivia question. And um, if you know the answer to this question, you'll call us at 516-945-9099. And let's see our book trivia question. I hope he puts it up because I'm not sure I could pronounce it. <laughs> okay. And here it comes, which is good because you can't pronounce it either. There mm. it is. What is a libro cubicularist? Mm. I think you got it right. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully nobody will know if I got it wrong. What is a libro cubicularist? Well, I was being very kind to our audience today. I made it a multiple choice question. Is it someone who reads as they eat? Someone who quotes random book trivia? Someone who reads in bed? or someone who carries books wherever they go. If you know Dr. Titus, please don't say anything. I won't. I won't. <laughs> He's so smart, he knows what a libro cubo is. <laughs> but if you know, please call us at 516-945-9099 because our lucky caller is going to win a free book today, one of Dr. Titus's books. So please call, and if the phone doesn't ring, we'll ask the question again in 10 minutes, just okay. to make sure. <laughs> so tell me something. Besides being a writer, do you like to read also? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, what do you like to read? Um, believe it or not. Smutty books. No, <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> Since I was young, I've read motivational books. Really? Yes. Oh, a personal all, development kind of a guy. Yes, that has always been my genre of books. Oh, who are um, some of your favorites? Uh, one that I don't really want to mention, but uh, <laughs> I read Donald Trump's books. I didn't read any of them. Yes, I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> I he read... must not be named, huh? Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> that was way before he was the president. I figure you were so. going for like Tony Robbins. And Tony Jack Robbins, yeah. Les, Les Brown. Yes. Um, there's, another, there's a book that I read, probably one of the most recent ones is called The Alchemist. I think that's how you pronounce it. The Alchemist. You know, my yes. son had to read that for school. That is a very good book. That was a book. required book for yes. freshmen. It's a very good book, especially for students. That's Really? Yes. yes. It of course, he was 14 at the time. He told me it was terrible. But, you <laughs> well, <know>. yes. <laughs> I, I can understand that. <laughs> that age. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I've got to try that mm -hmm. one. Yes, it's very I've got, good read. I've got Jack Canfield's The Success Principles right ah, now. On yes. my, I've read it before, but you know what? We need reminders. Oh, yes. It's very important to remind yourself. Yeah, because yes. we can forget so easily what we're <laughs> supposed to be doing and kind of get off the track. Yeah. And I love those ones that are like a metaphor, like, who moved my cheese? <laughs> That's one of my favorites. Well, yeah. especially since one of your books is about success and personal development. Absolutely, then, yes. Then I could see why you, you have some faves. Mm -hmm. Even he who must not be named. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, do you read fiction or do you prefer to watch your fiction on TV or I the prefer movies? to watch it on, on TV and in the movies, yeah. yeah they do I, such I a just, good job. Why bother? Yes, they do. Well, not, not really why bother because reading gives you a whole different perspective. It does. Um, it does. But for time reasons. I understand. You know, television I, and movies is it. 
Well, because of those time reasons, actually, interesting, interesting fun fact about books, the fastest growing segment of the book market is audiobooks. Mm -hmm. Because we're all in the car. Yes. All the time. So yes. audiobooks it's huge. It's huge, and it's growing. That's that's yes. the next step for me. It's growing. You also yeah. an audio book is yes. in your future. Yes, it is. Okay, Very well, soon. when you're ready, um, my publishing company just put in an audio studio okay. because perfect. audio books is growing. Yes, it so is. we are yes. ready. We yes. are we're perfect. All perfect. set up and ready for audio books <laughs> yes. to catch those people in the car. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you got stuck in traffic coming. Here. Yes, I did. You see, you could have had an audio book. We talked about that well, on you, the way over. <laughs> you, you had your beautiful wife instead, yes, but yes. Uh, an audio book would have been nice too. Mm -hmm. But but for our audience, all of those books that you are finished reading, let's say, um, we have a charity of choice here, which is the Book Fairies. And the Book Fairies make sure that books get into the hands of people who are not um, able to get books for themselves. Mm -hmm. So you'll see here the bookfairies.org. They are phenomenal. They collect oh, about 50,000 books a month and get them out to schools right here on Long Island that mm. don't have books. They open the doors one day a month for teachers that aren't able to get books in their classrooms to come in and literally just load up their van with books for their students. Mm -hmm. And they also ship books overseas to over 50 libraries in Africa. So if wow. you have books that you have already finished reading, or, you know, we all have books in our house that we're never going to read. That happens, too. <laughs> yes. um, you can go to thebookfairies.org or, even better, come any Wednesday night when we're filming here at uh, Paradise Studios and drop off your books. You can have a glass of wine with us, and we have a little free red penguin gift for all of our book donors because we're so thrilled. And I have a trunk full of books right now from mm -hmm. donors, okay. so I'll be driving by the Book Fairies. We're going to hear from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Between the covers, and we're here with Dr. Alfred Titus, who has quite a resume. I loved reading about it because he's a, a retired police officer, and, yes. and the word hostage negotiator <laughs> jumped right out as soon okay. as I saw that. I was like, "Oh, we need we need Mr. Hostage <laughs> Negotiator on the show." And uh, the first book we're talking about, since you have several, is the personal side of policing. Okay. This is fabulous. Oh, do we have the wrong slide up? Well, we. 
That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> a little slip. There we go. The personal side of policing. Uh, this grew out of your 23-year career with the NYPD. Yes. And I loved not being a police officer mm -hmm. myself or even married to one, but I learned so much reading this yes. book. Yes. There's a lot to learn from this book. This book is not only... It, it was originally written um, for uh, people interested in a career in law enforcement. Yes. I teach uh, at John Jay College, and a lot of my students always have all of these questions. As soon as the class starts, the first day they have these questions, you know, and I, I said to myself, you know what, let me put together something for them this so that they can access it. Well, you know what I loved that you touched on? I'm, I'm sure that when they're in the police academy, they find out about certain things yes. naturally. But when you mentioned things like family, private life, and public sentiment. Whoa. Yeah. That was a biggie. It is a biggie. And, and that's something really that is. I'm not, I mean, I don't go to the police academy, mm -hmm. but I don't know that they're telling them really what's going to happen to their family, yeah. their private life, and yeah. what happens with public sentiment. Yes, yes. They do, they do talk about it in the academy, but I find that when you hear, when you get information from multiple sources, it tends to become more credible to you yes. as an individual. So I'm hoping that, you know, in, in addition to the, the conversations we have in class and people who know me and the things that I've been through in my life, that they will, you know, take it an extra step further yes. and make sure that they talk to their families. Yes. That's, that's the biggest part um, as far as dealing with the families and being a police officer. Well, that's what I loved about the book, was the fact that it was so proactive. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just wait until your marriage crumbles <laughs> and, and then you try to do something about right, it. Right. Or wait until you're, you're finding yourself, you know, unfortunately, possibly hated on the streets mm -hmm. by various people, and then what do you do? This was very proactive. Yes. This is what to do before that yes, happens. Yes, and to prevent that from happening. Absolutely. Absolutely. I loved that Absolutely. because I'm picturing, you know, the the 21 year old in the police academy mm -hmm. who thinks that they're invincible yes. <laughs> yes, and yes. thinks it's not going to happen to them yes. and then they're shocked and then unfortunately I would guess that they're kind of on the defensive. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, that's what ends up happening a lot of times. And reading this in advance, even about satisfaction, you know, yes. job satisfaction. Yes. You know, it's it's just respect and envy. Mm. That was a great. Yes. Yes. Very I, interesting. I mean, like I said, this book is not just for police officers. I suggest anyone who's just interested in what police do and what they go through should absolutely. get this book. Absolutely. Um, it opens your eyes to so many different things that you're just not aware of. You know, I'm glad you said that because while I am not a police officer mm -hmm. and I'm not married to a police officer, I do have police officers in my family right. or friends. And I was so glad to read it because it really gave me an understanding yes. of things that are going on that I would have, you know, I see someone at a barbecue. Mm -hmm. I have no idea yes. what's going on. And right. this really put things in perspective. It also put things in perspective to me when, you know, you hate to see things in the news. And you really don't know what's true, right. what's media, yes. and just to kind of understand another side. Exactly. It really helped me. I feel like at that next barbecue, I'll be like, <laughs> I got this. I know what you're going through. I know what yeah. you're dealing with. Yes. And, and yes. there were things in here. Now, my, my daughter is not a police officer, but she's in the Air Force. Oh, okay. And reading some of this, mm -hmm. especially respect relate. and envy. Yes. I said, yes. wow, yes. that's, yes. I've seen that in action. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of that. Yeah. There's a lot of that. You know, and that was mm -hmm. really, really cool to read. Yeah. What is it that you, you know, besides... Obviously, we want everybody to read the entire thing. So um, I know we had on the slide where your website is mm -hmm. to go to your website or, you know, to get the books. Right. And, and there were some other things on your website that we're going to talk about they can find out. Mm -hmm. But if there were just a few tidbits that you could okay. share with us, that if, if you, you know, someone's not going to read the whole book, what can you tell okay. us? Okay. Well, if you're, if, if you're interested in going into a career in law enforcement, the first thing I would tell you is start planning your retirement from day one. I love that. Okay. You got a whole financial section yes, there. Yes, there's a whole chapter one yes. is completely financial, yes. and I touch on it again in, in the end. That is, that, is the, that is such an important aspect because you, 
because it's law enforcement, you're not expected to work the normal 40, 50 years that normal people work right. because it's a stressful job it and is. there's a lot of and risk physically and taxing involved. also physically, physically taxing, taxing too. So, so you so plan your retirement so that when you do retire, you can either start another career or just relax, which a lot of people do a lot of both. Right. The second thing kind of touches back to the stress on the job is try to maintain your health. Oh, Keep like your that. health in mind throughout yeah. because there is a lot of stress. There is stress from inside the department, there is stress from the streets, and then you have stress from your family. Mm. So it comes from all angles. And, um, you know, police suicide is a big issue. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Um, and so it's important to keep your mental health and your physical health intact. There are multiple sources within the police department to help you with all of that. I, I'm so glad you mentioned suicide because that is a horrible, horrible issue. This past week we had two. Yes, two here in New York. Yes. Yeah, which was just horrifying. Yes. And along with it being at a higher rate for the police and the armed forces, mm -hmm. yes. you know, a similar kind of field. Right. Um, I recently read that statistically, we always think that suicide is a huge problem for young people, and it is. Mm -hmm. But quite frankly, middle-aged men are the yes. highest statistical rate of suicide, of suicide in our country. Yes. And while certainly the police department is not only men, mm -hmm. it is still more men than women. Yes, it is. And that coupled with the stress, coupled with the fact that statistically middle-aged men is the highest, it is so important to take care of yourself. Yes, it is. Physically, mentally, mentally. emotionally. Yes, yes. That's huge. Absolutely. What are things now, thankfully you're sitting here, mm -hmm. um, you look like the picture of health. <laughs> I met your beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. You look fabulous. So, any secrets? Um, I mean, besides, <laughs> read the book. <laughs> you know, join a gym, eat healthy, you know. Um, one of one, one of the other things related to stress that I would say is when you leave the job at the end of your shift, disconnect. Ooh, I like yes. that. Yes, it's almost like you're pulling the plug, and then now you become a different person. Right. And you right. go home to your loved one, and hopefully you have a situation where they're running to you and jumping in your arms when you run through the door because that's what you're going to feel like you need right. on many days. Right. Believe me, you're really going to feel that. And if you have that, cherish it. The biggest thing, again, communication. Mm -hmm. Make sure that your spouse or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever it is understands what you're going through. You know, and also understands that maybe you may need 20, 30 minutes. So they should to, read this book, your spouse, your the girlfriend. They also, they, absolutely. It's just as much as the person who's absolutely. in the department. The spouse should be reading this. Absolutely. Very informative book. Absolutely. Yes. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Now, it's interesting. You were talking about disconnecting. Now, you had a 23-year a career. Yes. Which means that when you started, you were a, technology being what it was, mm -hmm. um, 23 years ago, you could leave and walk out that door. Can police officers still, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yes, you yes. know, I don't know many of our business people, their cell phone rings around the mm -hmm. clock. I don't know if that's the same in the police department, but unfortunately the news is a 24 hour cycle. Yes, yes it is. And it even is. if you're off duty, Mm -hmm. Yes, that's there's still a be, lot of information coming at you. That's got to be really rough yes. on the people who are in now to do that disconnect that you it described. It is, it is. And, and especially, um, it may be somewhat easier for police officers bec in uniform because you, uh, for, most, in, for the most part, when, when your day ends, it's, it ends. But as a detective, yes. you still have that case. And you, know, you may go home at four o'clock and six o'clock somebody may walk in with information on your case and you could live two three four hours away sometimes oh and now not only do you get the call and you're thinking about should i go in now you have your wife and your kids here and you're like oh we just get ready to eat dinner i mean right, there's just right. there's so many levels of stress that just come into oh, it you know gosh so it, it can be a difficult job but balance and communication is the key now the words that jumped out at me from reading the back of your book mm -hmm. that, that say stress all over them to me <laughs> are hostage negotiator. Yes. That yes. sounds like the most stressful thing that you could yes. possibly do. Actually, to be honest with you, it's not stressful. Really? I don't feel it. I don't find that it. That was the one stressful. that I read and went, 
Yeah, I believe that the training that we, re we receive as a hostage negotiator is so good that you are just so prepared that it removes the stress. Because I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. I'm really glad well, to hear that. Well, one of the main things with being a hostage negotiator is that you have to have that calm, relaxed personality. You have to be able to go into a situation at that level. Wow. So that has helped me on the job as well, right, just right. The, the training that I've, that I've received. But I've had some very interesting cases. In I've read about <laughs> some. Yes, some of them are in there. Some, yes. uh, yeah, yeah, very <laughs> interesting uh, cases. Uh, I found myself in places I'd never thought I would be. <laughs> on yes. the s hanging off the side of a bridge, yep, etc. Yep. Those of you who want to know more, get the book. Get the book. <laughs> get the book. All right, we're going to take a short commercial break while I get an autograph. We'll be right, right. back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Between the Covers. We're so delighted to have Dr. Alfred Titus talking to us about policing, as he's a professor at John Jay College in the uh, Criminal Justice Criminal Department. Justice. Mm -hmm. But he also wrote a book about personal empowerment and success called Forward Motion, The Keys to Progress and Success. I love that, because we were just talking about mental health. Yes. And a lot of that has to do with these things that you have here, dreams, deferred, drugs and alcohol, education, motivation, mm -hmm. fantastic topics here. Yes. So what made you write this? Well, that book I've had in me since probably I was in high school. Really? Yes, and I waited until I retired to write it. <laughs> um, and Dreams Deferred, Dreams chapter deferred, one. Dreams Deferred, yes. And also, being in law enforcement, I was able to get more information on the book. I found, um, being in law enforcement, I dealt with a lot of individuals in different situations, stressful, uh, some, some pleasant, some stressful, and I found that everyone that I spoke to has the same type of uh, dream to be successful at something. Yes. And I found that a lot of our youth have that as well. However, what's missing is the know-how, the mm -hmm. steps that need to be taken, or someone to guide them. Right. Um, so, and a lot of them try a lot of things that end up getting them in trouble, mm -hmm. trying to reach what they consider success. Right. So this book was kind of written to give them a roadmap to reach success in a legal manner. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and legal success. Yeah, legal on, on that side, on the law enforcement side, but in, in general, just 
understanding the different steps and processes and that it is a journey. It's not something that happens overnight and there are certain steps that you can follow to reach the success that you're trying to achieve. I'm so glad you said the words, you know, the, the success, how they term it. Mm -hmm. I think so much about success has to do with terms. Yes. And it's a shame in this world that sometimes people try or expect things that are not only unattainable, because mm -hmm. I'm all for trying everything. Absolutely. But patterning their dreams off of someone else's dreams oh. instead of their own dreams. Yes, yes. You know, I, I always said about my own children, my least favorite day of the school year as a mom mm -hmm. was when they returned after Christmas vacation mm. because they would all compare who got what. <laughs> and my yes. kid, who didn't even want that stuff, mm -hmm. now all of a sudden they were upset because they didn't get the stuff yes. that they didn't even want. Yes. And, you know, when you're talking about success, so many times people are, I want to be famous. Mm -hmm. Do you really? Right. Do you really know what that is? <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want that? Yeah. You know, sometimes we see things, and because we see them, mm -hmm. it's like a kid watching, oh, I want that slushy maker. Do you right. really? <laughs> you didn't want it until you saw it. Right. So, right. you know, finding what is it that you really exactly. want is exactly. such a big Figuring thing. Figuring that out, yes, yes. Yeah. Because you can't be successful and, unless you know what you want. Because how many people who are uber wealthy, let's say, mm -hmm. are actually miserable? Exactly. They say that happiness, while, you know, there is a degree that being, I'll say, more financially stable mm -hmm. does add to happiness. Because yes. it is hard to be happy when you're starving. <laughs> but if, if happiness goes up with finances, only to a certain point, and then the richer you get, your happiness actually mm. drops off. Yes, So yes. it's not really money that people no, want. No, There's a saying, more money, more problems. That's right. <laughs> and, and, and you hear true. that? Don't go for the money. <laughs> <laughs> go for your passion. Find out what it is I love that, that you want. Think about back from your childhood. What was it that you always wanted to be? That's what I love. You know? is, is that what you talked about? Yes. Is yes. finding what is it that you really want. Yes. Yes. Because if you really want it, then not only can you attain it, mm -hmm. But when you attain it, you will feel that Absolutely. sense of satisfaction. Absolutely. You said you wanted to write this book since you were younger. Younger, yes. And because yes. this was a passion project, seeing it here with mm -hmm. your name on the bottom, yes, like yes. that's cool. Yes, it is. That's really, really cool. <laughs> yes. You know, they say 90% of the population wants to write a book. Yes. And I've, I've had many people come to me. You did. Yes. And not Yes. yes. So, so yes. how do you guide young people into finding what is their, what is their passion? Well... One of the first things I try to tell them, because I see a lot of it uh, from being a, a law enforcement officer, number one, you are in control. And when I say that, what I mean is the choices and decisions that you make is going to determine whether you reach the success that you're trying to reach. So many times our youth have these amazing dreams, and it would be great if they could achieve them. But one wrong choice, one wrong decision, can take them completely off of the path that they could have traveled to reach that success. Right. So that's, that's step number one. I love that. That's very right. important. And another way I like to say it is just stop and think before you make every move. There have been times in my youth that I remember where I was in some place that I maybe should not have been, and I thought about it, and I said, let me out. Stop Good for you. Me out. And it's that type of thinking that you have to be cognizant of. You have to... You have to do that in order to reach your success. And I love that you're sharing with young people that you've been there. I've been there. You've yes. been in that car, that situation, yes. that yes. place, and and you didn't just follow through. Because sometimes people think, well, I can't leave now. Right. But you're saying to them, <laughs> yeah, you yes, can. Yes, you can. You can yes, leave you now. Yes, you can. Yes. You know? Your life and your future depends on it. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, one of my favorite things that happened when, when my son was a younger boy, he was at a party mm -hmm. that 10 minutes after I dropped him off, he called mm -hmm. and said, you better pick me up. <laughs> and I said, are you sick, innocent me? Mm -hmm. No, he saw stuff. Hoping. <laughs> he saw stuff, and he immediately wanted out. That's so good. I said, all right, I'll be right there. Well, when I came back, 
he wasn't. He was sitting on the curb wow. waiting for me. He, he removed himself completely. He wanted out. Yes. Fifteen minutes later, it was raided. Wow. You know, and he Perfect. he wanted out. Wow. And and I say, good for you. Yes. You didn't sit there and say, well, I'm already here. Right. No, 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 no. Exactly. <laughs> you you start walking, man. Right. And, yes. And how how inspiring that you say that because you know. We could tell the kids you should leave, but right. when you tell them and you say, I've been there. Been there and I've seen a lot of people who did not leave and, and it doesn't turn out good. It doesn't turn out it good. It doesn't turn out good. Thank yeah. you. Thank you You're for, for yeah. telling our young yeah. people that. Yeah. Now tell me a little bit about, I know you run workshops to yes. help this, so yes. tell us a little so, bit about that. Um, I, I, I run a few workshops. Um, I put together a workshop called the uh, Forward Motion Life Success Workshop and what it is is um, because I know a lot of our youth do not always read books, and I still want to get my <laughs> message to them, so I've created a workshop where I bring the information to you. Nice. Um, I've worked at a couple of uh, small uh, community organizations and churches and uh, the Boys and Girls Club and things like that where I bring my message to the youth. That's fabulous. Yes. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that this flyer for your Life Success Workshop is on the Between the Covers website. Mm -hmm. So if you go to BetweenTheCoversTV.com, yep. right there you'll see this whole flyer. Yes. And when you have future workshops, please yes. send them. Okay. Because we're going to keep this page live. Okay. You know, Excellent. so I would absolutely love to put your, yes. your stuff there so people can connect to Excellent. it. Excellent. What else do you have there? Um, well, the flyer is also on my website as well. Fantastic. And, and your website, atitusconsulting.com. Yes. I know we had that on the little slide, but atitusconsulting.com, and all of your new stuff will be there yes, as well. Yes, all of my new stuff will be there Fantastic. as well. Also, I started a, uh, a uh, nonprofit. Wow. And um, it's also called Forward Motion Life Success. And one of the main goals is um, I'm starting a, I don't like to say college because it's not just for college, but I'm starting a, a scholarship, oh. a future leadership scholarship. And it's going to be um, probably beginning, I'm, I'm still raising money, but the first scholarship will be giving out probably 2020, next year. And all of the proceeds from the different workshops and things like that will go towards that scholarship. Oh, so thank that you. information is to come. That's fabulous. Um, what I have here is an example of the workbook, one of the workbooks that I use for one of the workshops. And it's just something that I give out and the, the students that are part of the workshop get to fill it out and, and we go through the different aspects of it and you know. So that's good. Um, the other thing I'm working on is because of the current climate and the uh, issues that are happening in our media and in our community, I've put together a preparing for police, for positive police interaction workshop. Oh, now where do you give this one? I'll take that um, one. I haven't done it yet. It's okay. still in the works. There will be one this month, probably towards the end of the month. Um, not sure on the location yet, but all that information will be posted. Okay. And that is to help our youth get through situations where they have police interaction. Yes. So many of our youth do not understand what needs to be done or, or the mindset. In, in order to get through these things successful or a, a difficult situation, you kind of have to put yourself in the police officer's shoes as well as, on, you know, he has to put himself in your shoes as well. Right. So a understanding of the entire concept is necessary and I give that in the workshop right. um, and it allows them to safely get out of it, you know, or, or, or just at least safely go through it, should I say. Right. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so just go to atitusconsulting.com mm -hmm. to learn about all of these workshops. Um, thank you so much for You're all welcome. that you do You're and welcome. the new nonprofit and the scholarship. Yes. I'm just blown all away. All coming soon. Thank you. <laughs> We're just going to hear from our sponsors and we'll be right back. Okay. Everybody get up when you're feeling down. Everybody get up, turn your life around. When you trust yourself, you have the power to make up your life. Studio 1031 is an environment where excellence is always expected. We work with all types of people from all walks of life. We give deserving women something that they wouldn't give themselves. 
Come join this makeup movement. When you're feeling down, turn your life around. Make up your life. Let's go. Let's go, Mom. No, I've planned you with her. I'm sorry, but that's the deal. A little bit closer, a little bit to the left. You guys leave your beer, please. Okay. There we go. Three, two, Daddy, one. Daddy, Daddy! Daddy, where's mommy? Welcome back to Between the Covers. I'm so delighted to be joined by Dr. Alfred Titus, who is doing so much for our youth and our police officers and our future police officers and the loved ones of police officers and all those people who really, really need your help. But we're going to talk a little bit about you as an author now. Okay. Because I'm so excited that you wrote two books. Mm -hmm. And we were just saying that so many people wish they could write a book. Yes. And they say, I can't write. <laughs> so before we get to our writing tips from great authors, because we do have those, tell me about your writing style. When you were writing these books, are you a typer, dictator, longhand on a legal pad? Mm. How'd you do it? Well, believe it or not, I do a little bit of all of those okay. things. Okay. One of the things I found myself repeatedly doing was um, on my phone, there's a little recording thing. So yeah. I could be out doing something, something comes to my mind, and I just make a quick voice recording. I go home later and I put it on paper, or put it into the computer. But for me, writing is a continuous process. It could take me three to six months of just having one thought and just continually building on it as I go forward. Wow. And that's how I've been able to, to write both books in Two such books? a short time. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, when you use that recording feature on your phone, mm -hmm. did it also turn it into text for you? I could have had it done that as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's that, kind of cool. That is another option. Yeah. Yeah. And then I could just email it without even having to type it and just cut and paste and yeah. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people say to me, I can't type, I can't type either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's a great method. And mm -hmm. and lo and behold, you've got two books here, yes. so it must yes. have it must have worked. Yes, it did. Well, it I did. just gathered up some writing tips from great authors and we're gonna see what they have to say if okay. they're worth worth us learning from. <laughs> Because, I mean, they're the great, so they must know something. So our first one is from Ernest Hemingway. He's mm. pretty great. Oh, yeah. He knows stuff. And he <laughs> says, the first draft of everything is something. <laughs> mm. Garbage. Mm. The first draft of everything is garbage. Is that true? Did you feel that way? Could be. It could be, yeah. You, you know, it's funny. I work with a lot of authors. Mm -hmm. And I find that they... Professional writers mm -hmm. know that what they write first is garbage, and then it gets edited and yes, fixed up. there's a lot of that. But <laughs> when I work with new authors, mm -hmm. first-time writers, they seem to think that what they write first should be perfect. And I'm always, mm. I, I feel like I'm constantly saying to them, no, no, no don't worry about it. No. And, and, they'll, and they'll sit on it forever and make it just perfect. I'm saying, 
just keep going. Yes. Especially like you were talking about writing all day long. Yes. If you've got those creative juices flowing, yes. you know what? Get it out. Yes. And we can fix it later. That is so important. That's with a voice recorder. Yeah, or you type I love yourself that. a quick text and send it to to yourself or to someone and because things just pop up. Right. You could see something that can spur a thought that would be perfect for your book. And and that's that's how you get And a we'll great fix the grammar and the exactly. spelling later. That comes later. I thought it was kind of empowering that even Ernest Hemingway thought that everything he wrote first was garbage. <laughs> well, that's not what he wrote on the slide, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our next our next slide is from Stephen King, another very prolific mm -hmm. writer. If you don't have time to read, you don't have the time or the tools to write. Simple as that. Mm. Stephen King is a big one that says, if you're going to be a great writer, you have to be a great reader. Yes. And I get that. I get that. I do get that. You know, and I, I find do. it really interesting that you, who basically wrote a motivational, success-oriented book, love reading motivational, yes. success-oriented yes. books. Yes, I grew up with that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to be a writer, if you want to write paranormal romance exactly you need to read, read. paranormal romance <laughs> yes. and you know it's funny I, I deal with again a lot of authors and sometimes they don't want to read it because they're afraid that they're gonna copy it Copyright. but quite frankly you need to read a lot of yes. stuff as much as you can yeah definitely you know don't think that people think that they're supposed to invent something brand new human nature is quite frankly if you were gonna write a paranormal romance mm -hmm. even if you never read anyone else's it's going to be pretty close. Yes. <laughs> you is. know? It is. So, it so is. don't put yourself in a box and purposely shield yourself. Right. Just like Absolutely. if you wanted to be a, a filmmaker, you should watch every single Steven yes. Spielberg film there is. Yes, exactly. You should. Exactly. That's kind of dumb not to, to want otherwise. to expose yourself. If you want to be a great winemaker, shouldn't you drink all the great wines? <laughs> I, I think so. That sounds like fun, yeah. I think you should drink all the great wines. <laughs> all right, our next, our next quote from Zadie Smith. This is an interesting one. Um, and I have a bunch of Zadie Smith's books there, so she's, she's obviously written a lot. Work on a computer that is disconnected from the internet. <laughs> oh. I love that. Yes. So distracting. I can attest to that. Right? Is it, is, yes. is it rough? Well, Distraction, those... yes. You need to either lock yourself in a room or, like you said, disconnect from the Internet because there are so many distractions. Yes. And I find I write the best. I mean, I have, sit, I have sat down and wrote for 8 to 12 hours straight. Wow. Because it... When you're in the moment, you got to take advantage of And only if of the that. Internet is down. Well, of course. <laughs> of course. Because if I'm back and forth, then... I'm not going to be able to do that. Yeah, you, you have should to really just be focused. Yeah. Well, it's funny that you know we're talking about the internet and writing, but you mm -hmm. also talked about how important it is to disconnect as a police officer mm -hmm. from the job. Yes, it but is. The fact is, you know, people think it's cool to multitask, but no, you're actually better off focusing on one, on one thing. One thing. Yeah. Trying to do everything and answer your emails and this is going on and that's going <laughs> yes, on. No. Yes. Yes. Focus. Focus. You'll get a lot more done, and it'll be much more higher, a much higher quality product. Yeah. yeah. So cut the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. There are actually programs that on your computer you can cut notifications, mm -hmm. internet, yes. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, it won't cut off the fact that you might think that you need to check things. <laughs> you you got to do that. Right. You know, that's, right. Uh, this next quote is, is kind of funny. Also, I love this. Um, by Muriel Spark, another very prolific writer, and she wrote, if you want to concentrate deeply on some piece of writing, you should acquire a cat. <laughs> 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 now, I think personally wow. Muriel Spark is lying because I don't know if you have any pets. No. Okay. <laughs> we have a cat. Okay. And the cat is the biggest distraction to writing there really? is. You okay. know what the cat wants to do? If Lay on your book, right? Right, right across the desk. <laughs> I see your wife is nodding. That. Yes, yes. Right across the desk. <laughs> uh, my husband just finished writing a book, okay. and sometimes he would have to leave his office and be at the kitchen island, very mm. uncomfortable because the cat. We have a very fat cat. Okay. She could get up on his desk, but she couldn't get all the way onto, onto the, the island. island. Okay. And she just sprawls out on his <laughs> desk. And, and, and then the keyboard and mm -hmm. plays with the mouse. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I don't know what kind of cat Muriel Sparks has, but it wow. must be a fat cat that must can't make be. it onto the desk. Must be. 
And, and then our final quote, since we were talking about the wine, by Ernest Hemingway again, he's the king of quotes, write drunk, edit sober. <laughs> Okay, so tell me, you're a writer of two books, is that I, the truth? You know what, I'm not going to be too specific, but <laughs> that is true. Okay. Yes, when you have a, when your mind is a little bit off, it's, you're better off. <laughs> when, you're, when you're completely sane, you think there's too many things going on. <laughs> I get that. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it helps. Well, it you helps. know what, I think the other thing that helps is that, like I was describing with the first scenario, people have a tendency to think think that they should be editing as they're writing. Mm, no. And quite frankly, I always try when I'm working with authors, mm -hmm. don't worry about it. Right. Get it just on put the it on page, page. Don't worry whether about it's spelling, the page, the screen, grammar, none of that. dump it. Yes. We'll fix it later. Yes, yes. You know, when, the, when those juices are flowing, yes. and if you have to be drunk to do it, <laughs> but when the juices are flowing, don't, whatever you do, don't stop. And there's nothing that's going to stop you more than saying, is it isn't with an apostrophe right. or oh, don't worry about it. Then you go to the dictionary and that, now you're right. totally off. Then you then you lost your right. remote. Just Absolutely. keep going. Absolutely. People are like, ah, oh, I think I should look for a synonym for this. Oh, just keep going. <laughs> just keep going. Yes. So yes. so whether you actually write drunk and edit sober mm -hmm. or at least just write. Right. And yes. separate edit. Yes. From writing. Yes. Just right. keep Write as much as you can as and as often as you can. And turn off the internet. Yes, and disconnect. Well, I mean, the fact <laughs> is, whether or not you're writing or just hanging out with your family, wouldn't mm -hmm. we all be better off if we turned off the internet? Yes. I mean... <laughs> Today, yes. yes. <laughs> I say that on an internet show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> which, is, which is really bad, but, you know, the internet has been, like, the biggest blessing and the biggest curse to yes. our society. Yeah, exactly. It, it's actually both. You're it right. is. It is both things. Yes. And, and the most important thing we could do is figure out what the difference is. Mm -hmm. And use the good... Yes. And not the bad. Exactly. And I'm sure with, with your uh, young ones, hasn't the internet gotten I, more yes. of them into trouble oh, than... It is such a distraction. And it gives them really bad ideas. Yes. And, <laughs> and, and a lot of them, especially the younger ones, they don't, they don't know what's real and what's not real, but they believe everything, you know, and they emulate it. They think that's just, you know, they see uh, some famous person and say, oh, I want to be that. And they don't understand what it took to get there. They just see the end result. That's right. There's so much more. There's such a there's a process for everything. Absolutely. And you have to take those steps. Yeah. You got yeah. it. All right, we're gonna take a short break. I need another signature. And we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping gems from Keisha Christian. She's on a mission. Sharing information. Knowledge for soul. Body and mind. Dropping gems. KeishaGems.com Inspired by aerobic classes and a dream, Body by Tamika has helped hundreds of women reach their fitness goals. One size doesn't fit all and neither should your fitness experience. Body by Tamika is about creating an environment where women can come together to work out, meet new friends, and get inspired. Whether you desire to lose weight, tone up, or prepare for a mommy makeover, Body by Tamika is here to help. Body by Tamika is considerate to female weight loss challenges resulting from pregnancy and or life changes that can be extremely resistant to diet and exercise. For stubborn problem areas, Body by Tamika offers non-invasive aesthetic procedures such as laser lipo and wood slimming body contour. Book your free consultation today to see for yourself.
Are you a tie lover? You love the diversity in ties because they come in different colors, fabrics, patterns, etc. Get access to a wide variety of neckties. Buy from or trade with other tie lovers. Don't wear ties anymore? You have more ties than you know what to do with? Want to turn all those ties into real money? Do you just need a tie? You just need a tie for a special occasion. Now you can buy a tie today and sell it tomorrow. The Necktie Exchange, the online retailer where you buy, sell, and trade neckties. Register today. Dropping. Welcome back to Between the Covers. Thanks for joining us. Um, I always like to share a little bit of publishing news, and we had some that kind of bordered right on our topic here. Yes. Um, it seems that Linda Fairstein has lost her publishing contract with Penguin Books. She also lost her place on the board of trustees at Vassar College mm -hmm. and her place in various nonprofits because of her, um, shall we say, involvement. Involvement. Involvement with <laughs> the Central Park jogger case. Yes. yes. So, uh, so be careful who your book contracts oh, are with. Oh yes, <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. But, but that's a lot what you're talking about here. Yes, it's a lot of what. Um, I've gotten phone calls from community members asking me to put something together for our youth to help them when they have to have police contact. Yes. To teach them what to do and, not, and what not to do. And that's what the second workshop is going to be about. And it's, a lot of it is based off of the latest press from, from the movie right. uh, about the Central Park Five and the Central Park Jogger. Right. Um, and Linda Fairstein is receiving a lot of backlash. Yes. And as a result, you, we see what's happening. Yes, and from yeah. a publishing standpoint, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> not to mention the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. But those those poor kids. Yes. yes. They were, you know, their their entire lives. Their lives were changed completely. I mean, changed is being changed, nice. Yes, change is saying it lightly. I yes. mean, I hope they're reading your book because. This is a big... It is a big issue, especially in the minority communities. And I'm so glad that you're, I mean, you're one person. Mm -hmm. You can't possibly reach every single young person. Right. We would love for that I to happen. I would love to, yes. But you're obviously starting a movement towards making sure that they are informed. Yes, because, informed. like you said, it can change their whole life. Yes, yes. And they were doing nothing. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and in addition to that, what, what, what I'm trying to also make sure that I bring forth is both sides of the issue. Thank I you. don't want to, I just don't want to take it from the community standpoint. I want the community to understand the police standpoint Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. I think it's fair. I think that's the only way to have a complete uh, understanding of all of the issues. You have to see both sides. Thank it, you. you cannot just do it from one side. That is absolutely huge. Mm -hmm. Can you remind our audience again where we can find you, find more information okay. about the workshops and everything else? Yes, so uh, all of my information is on my website, atitusconsulting.com. And uh, my phone number is there as well as email links and uh, other projects that I'm working on as well. Terrific. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you forget everything else that you heard, <laughs> um, at BetweenTheCoversTV.com, we also have all of Dr. Titus's links to his workshops, to his website, to his books, everything else, and those links will always remain live. Okay. So, you know, just go on over to BetweenTheCoversTV.com and you could, well, of course, look at past episodes, join our book club, but also find out more information about these workshops and everything else. Yes. I can't thank you enough for being on the oh, show with us pleasure. today. Thank you for having me. And I certainly want our audience to, well, I want them to read your books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I would like them to enter law enforcement because goodness knows that's something that we need. And yes, we need people is. who have, have learned so much from you about that to mm -hmm. go into it. So um, please read the books and read all books because we want to encourage reading here at BetweenTheCoversTV.com. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.